everybody, Richard again here from Electric Classic Cars and it's way past time to give you an update on Bug Zapper, our 1,000 horsepower Tesla powered hill climb monster. Let's get into it. Now before we get into this episode proper, there is good news and bad news my friends. Let's do bad news first. Unfortunately, we did not get into Pikes Peak International Hill Climb 2024. Our application went in, but as is so often the case with Pikes Peak, it was oversubscribed and we were one of the few cars that didn't get in. However, every cloud has, has a silver lining and that's the way I'm looking at this because that gives us more time now to dial in the car, tune it in, just get it running spot on and gives us more test time so that we're gonna go for 2025 Pikes Peak. So that's what we're gonna do. This gives us more time. Uh, we're gonna be at a load of events this year. Anyway, we'll be at Goodwood Revival, Goodwood Festival of Speed, Car Fest in the UK, for instance. So you'll see the car out and about in its new livery. More on that later. But this year, Pikes Peak is off for us. We're concentrating on 2025. So that's the bad news. Now, the good news, people. We're really pleased to announce that Bug Zapper has a major sponsor. And that major sponsor is Mauser Electronics. So we've been using Mauser Electronics as pretty much our one-stop shop for all our electronics needs now for quite some time in the workshop. All the conversions and not just bug zapper. Great brands like Gigavac, Amphenol, Little Fuse, T Connectivity, etc. So there's a load of stuff that we get from Mouse Electronics in Bug Zapper, as well as all, as all our other conversions. So that's the good news, people. We have a major sponsor on board. Thank you, Mauser Electronics. Now, the last time you saw this car, it was naked because we went on a little bit of a test drive at a track. And if you've not seen that episode, click on the link above. But now the main difference is it has some clothes on. So we've got the bodywork on, we've got the rear clip here, and we've got the doors on. So the doors are actually properly working as well. Uh, the front clip is on, so that front clip's on. The roof section was always on because that's part of the bodywork itself. But yeah, front clip, doors, rear clip is on. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to need Tim's help, so he's going to have to put the camera on the tripod, 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 <laughs> and we're going to get the bodywork off so you can see how it all goes on. Okay. Forward a little bit first, and that's it, and then over, and then down. Now, it might not look like it, but a lot has happened in this area since the last episode. Because if you remember, there was a lot that we had to crack on with and kind of fix from that first test session. For instance, um, the steering was really, really heavy. Um, I found that I, I don't think anybody more than, say, 5 foot 11 could fit in. Um, so, yeah, there's loads of things that we had to uh, sort out. Um, Right, we'll start right at the front here. So Ali Sport have done a fantastic new radiator for the battery system. So there's a new radiator on there. Now there's one thing I'll show you later that we'll have to sort out on this that we're gonna change. And that is the fact that we're gonna have to mount it further down. I'll explain that later. But the biggest thing we've actually done is we've moved the whole front Tesla motor forward by around about three to four inches just so that people like Tim and others that are over six foot can actually drive this thing. Hooray! Yeah, no, that's not a good thing. <laughs> so, yeah, that actually had a knock-on effect to all sorts of things. The steering then got in the way. It just, you know, so that was major surgery. So this has come forward four inches. Steering and mounting and the system all had to change. The power steering itself has been upgraded to a bigger motor, so now it's really nice to turn. And you know, we can literally, if you turn it up to max, we can literally turn it with one finger. So we've, uh, and that's another thing to mention, we've now got adjustability on a knob on the dash for how much assistance you want on that as well. So yeah, coolant system, motor has moved, steering's all changed, power steering's been upgraded. What else have we done? Is there anything else I've done that I can remember? No, that's pretty much it underneath here. Brake ducts are on now as well. Um, so the only thing we've got to finish off here now is the steering rack needs to be mounted on because it's moved forward as well. And we have to be really careful not to affect uh, the Ackerman angle. And I'm not going to go into that in detail because that's a book. But yeah, 
Ackerman was something that we really had to be careful of moving all this geometry around. So that's just the only thing that needs to be finished there. So, interior-wise, apart from there being doors on the car now, it's pretty similar. If I take the steering wheel off so I can show you. The only thing we've really done in here, I've added a button here for the windscreen wipers. So, uh, and also the assist for the power steering. So there's an adjustability on how much assist I want on, on that. There's also speed related or speed variable assist as well. But uh, if I ever want to do drifting and like full on uh, power steering assist, then I can turn it all the way up to 11 on that. So that's the only thing I've done in here. But the main thing I want to find out, if I'm honest, in here is whether or not you fit, Tim. So yeah, let me add it. Moment of truth. Will Tim fit? Because I definitely can fit, but let's see. Well, six foot two of Tim fitting. Go on in, Tim. In you right, go. Let me add it. Dukes of Hazard. Well, that's showing your age for a start. <laughs> All right, let's see if you fit. Oh, look at that. Fits like a glove. Good move, what an improvement. That's not an improvement. That's Tim, perfect. Tim can fit in it. Perfect. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, happy boy. Oh, I can't wait to try this out now. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, what have I done? So, six foot two of Tim fits in. Um, you know, no surprise to be fair, because we have pushed it forward quite a bit. The pedal box had to go forward as well as the motor. But six foot four is a max we think we can fit in it now. So, right. Right, stop playing with things before you break it. Get out. <laughs> now, moving rearward on the car, the next thing is the rear clip. But before we take this off, just want to explain some of the air intakes here because we've got the main air intake here, which is going to the rear air box. It's not an air box for like an air intake on an engine. It's an air box for the radiator system at the rear, which is the, the motor coolant radiator. The front one's for the batteries, the rear one is for the motors. So we've got air intake here, and we've got air intake here. And this air intake here is gonna be uh, ducting for the, or cooling for the brakes. So this is for the radiator. If that's for the radiator, uh, that's for the brakes. But to get this off, I need glamorous assistant time, please, Tim. Ta -da. So let's get this up and it's a clamshell. So it opens this way. Okay. All the way, all the way. There we go, cool. Now we've got the clamshell off. You can see the ducting we've done here. So it's aluminium ducting to bring that air from the roof scoop down into the main radiator. We've got another Ali Sport radiator in there as well. And as I say, that's the radiator for the motors. We've got another um, air intake here, which is the one going to the NACA duct on the side window. But header tanks, it's pretty much the same apart from the aluminium ducting we've got here and the bigger, more efficient radiator from Ali Sport. But the main change is down here that we've done since the last one. Now, on that last episode we did of that test track, we didn't really have the right brakes on the rear. We just had some temporary brake calipers on just to get us around the track because that wasn't really what we we're testing, the brakes that is. But now we've got our proper brake setup on the front and on the rear. We've got our AP Racing Pro 5000 calipers here and we've got two calipers on the rear disc because we've also got an EPB caliper up there. That's an electronic parking brake caliper from Wilwood. So Wilwood for parking brake or handbrake as we call it in the UK and AP Racing Pro 5000 calipers for the main stopping power. And that is why the hydraulic handbrake now really works. And I mean really works. Just give it a little bit of a tickle and the rear locks up. Now from the rear angle, you can really get a good perspective as to how much wider these wings now are. The, both the front and the rear wings have had to come out quite some way. I think it was like two, maybe three inches each, just to cover the wider wheels and tires that we got on this. Because the original wheels and tires on the Fun Cup cars are quite narrow, but these are a lot wider and we need that to be able to have any chance of getting the power down from the Tesla drivetrain. But I really like the rear and the front to be that wider, lower kind of profile. And we've also put in, because I kind of want the car to look kind of stock-ish, if you like. And I know the, the race cars don't necessarily have rear lights, front lights, and all the other bits and pieces, like door handles, for instance. 
but I'm putting them on because I kind of want it to look beetle ish so we put the rear lights on today we've also got the cutouts because we've got to exit all that air that's getting pushed into the radiator we've got to get rid of it and tony our main fabricator he's come up with this design here and i quite like it it's like number plate there and a little bit of a scoop there so i'm really liking that but the rear is not finished by a long stretch because we need to talk about aero and let's talk about that next now there's no denying this car is gonna have loads of power from its Tesla motors. You could say it's gonna fly, but we don't literally want this car to fly. And that's where aerodynamics comes in. So at the front, we've got that air dam at the front, which is gonna direct most of the air over the car. Some of it's gonna go underneath, but more on that later. But most of the air is gonna be directed over the car. And what happens with a Beetle, quite frankly, it's not the best shape for a race car. I know that, but hey, I love beetles. But what's gonna happen is the air's gonna come to about here and air wants to carry on, but it can't because essentially it's gonna get dragged down by the shape of this car here. And what happens with anything that's dragged down, if you imagine you're pulling the air down like this, but at the same time, there's an equal and opposite force pulling up like that whenever you do like pull-ups. It's been a long time since you've done pull-ups, isn't it, Tim? <laughs> Looks so, like it as well. You're pulling it up like that and the body is getting pulled up by pulling that air down and that's where you get rear lift and that's what you don't want in a race car. So what you do to kind of you know counter that if you like is a rear wing not a spoiler because spoiler spoils the air and it's kind of uh, reducing the aerodynamic drag on the back but a rear wing pushes the rear down and that's what the original fun cups used to have around about there, and this is an original fun cup wing. And it's quite an aggressive shape if you look at it there, it's actually an upside down wing. If you turn it that way, it'll actually start flying that way, but it's pushing the car down. So that's where the original wing sat, but it's not very big. And apparently, I've been told many times, size matters. And this is, quite frankly, a little bit too small. So, to compare this, I'm gonna bring on my new wing, which hasn't gone on yet. Where is it? Over there. Now, this is a wing, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the size of this. It's taller than me. If I just do a size comparison here with this one. Oh, this is the old one. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, think, that's a lot bigger. I think it? we'll go for this one. <laughs> so this is what we've got to mount on the car next. Oh, don't fall. So this is going to sit around about here. Uh, just get the angles right. Around about there it's going to be sitting. So we've just designed the actual wing mounts and that is going to be sitting there. What does that look like? You've got a massive smile in your face. Is it, is it, is it, isn't it big? I think bigger? it's too big. It's not too big. No, no. Yeah, I think it needs to go bigger. Do you want it bigger? <laughs> put another one on. Yeah, put another one on. Yeah, right. So that's going to be the rear wing, people. It's a double-decked rear wing as well. So that's the rear wing. But as I mentioned before, some of the air goes underneath the car. So what do we do there? Right, now what about all this air coming underneath the car? Well, we've got a really, really flat floor, which is good. And that air is going to come underneath the car here. And then it's just going to exit. But we want to make that air work in our favour. And what we need to do there is use what's called a diffuser. Now, if I show you what one of those is, and the keen-eyed amongst you will notice this is carbon fiber as well as the wing, and really light and strong. Now, what is this gonna do? Well, essentially, you can see that this has an upward slant to it. And as I mentioned with the aerodynamics of the beetle roof, whenever you've got air being pulled upwards in this case, it's actually got an equal and opposite force pulling it down. So what we're doing, we're ramping the air in an upward slant to be able to kind of pull it further to the ground. So this is gonna sit underneath there. So if we put it in place, you can see it's got some duct like slats in there. If I put it in, so that's gonna sit somewhere kind of like that. And that's going to throw that air out, but at the same time, pull the rear car, rear of the car down and work in tandem with that rear wing as well. 
So yeah, a little bit more work to mount this proper and get that wing on. Now, round the front, you can see that air dam or the split that I was talking about before here, this thing here, that's gonna direct that air over the top. But the main thing that we need to add to the to-do list now is the radiator. You can see, or rather you can't see the radiator because it's mounted too high up. So we need to bring this radiator maybe two, maybe three inches further down so it just fills this space here, and that's the battery radiator. But the other thing is, as I mentioned before, I kind of want the car to look a bit more Beetle-esque than the Fun Cup shape um, or the Fun Cup race cars do. So we're going to actually put an original light lens and, and chrome trim on here, and we're going to use the US spec ones, which is a clear lens. So that's going to go on there. We're going to do that. And then there's the uh, air intakes here for the front brake ducting. So there's, you know, a hole there I don't like. And what I'm going to do is use the original horn grill. So we're going to put that over the uh, air intake for the brake cooling. And with the front light there, I think it's going to look pretty cool. So yeah, add that to the to-do list as well. So what do you think, guys? It's starting to look a little bit more like a car now than a child's climbing frame on wheels, isn't it? But there's still a long way to go. We haven't got the suspension yet. That's a really important part of the car. So the custom suspension is still to go on it. Obviously, we've got to do the aero, but we've got to do the paint. Now, I've got quite a complicated, funky paint job I want to do on this car, but I really don't know whether or not to go paint or wrap. I'm not an expert, so any guys out there in the UK that are experts in wrapping a car, let me know. Do you think this shape is just too complicated to wrap or, or not? I don't know. Um, so wrap or paint, comments below, please. But as far as the rest of the car is concerned, we're getting really close to getting it finished enough to get another track test and a proper track test this time where we can give it some beans. I'm thinking possibly end of May. So hopefully on the next episode, you'll see us burning rubber and hopefully not burning rubber actually and getting the traction down and going around corners really, really fast. But that's hopefully on the next episode. So on this episode, it remains me to say, Massive thank you to Mauser Electronics for sponsoring Bug Zapper. Go to mauser.com for all your electronics needs. And thank you to you guys for watching this build series so far. And on that note, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you on the next one.